PSA stands for prostate specific antigen. It's actually an enzyme that's made by the prostate to help make the semen a lot thinner so that it travels farther. So it is something that's supposed to be present in the, in the male body. PSA should be checked on a yearly basis for gentlemen who have normal uh, prostates. Uh, it's still considered a yearly exam for screening purposes. As of now, the PSA is a normal thing that's made by the body. So when a pa patient asks if there is anything you can do to prevent the rise in a PSA, not necessarily. Occasionally, the PSA can rise due to different reasons. It doesn't necessarily have to necessarily mean prostate cancer. Uh, other rises that can occur uh, can be due to uh, just an enlargement of the prostate. Uh, that occurs as men grow older. In addition, you can have inflammation of the prostate secondary to an infection or just due to inflammation. Part of what an in inflammation can occur is uh, when bike riders tend to be on their saddle for long periods of time or motorcycle riders, is there a potential that they can rise a PSA? Absolutely. Because of the fact that you're putting trauma onto the prostate, it will actually cause an inflammation. With that inflammation, the PSA will rise. So that the reason uh, for an elevated PSA isn't necessarily prostate cancer. BPH stands for benign prostatic hypertrophy. It means an enlargement of the prostate, and that's what people always talk about, BPH, what is it, what is it? And it's, it's just an enlargement of the prostate. Um, it occurs as men grow older. The reason for that is because of the fact that throughout their lives, testosterone is around. Testosterone makes the prostate grow, and as it grows, it starts to enlarge, and it causes an obstruction of the urethra, which is the urinary tube. And so if it causes an obstruction, men start to have difficulty urinating. TUMT is a procedure done in the office to help alleviate the symptoms of BPH. TUMT stands for transurethral microwave therapy. And what it is is actually a uh, heating of the prostate whereby you can shrink the prostate. And so uh, it's a therapy that can be done in the office. It only takes about an hour. Uh, it's something that's covered by most insurances. And as well, uh, patients do quite well afterwards without the need for either medications or surgical intervention. When we talk about BPH, we need to consider a continuum of treatment options. That starts off with medical therapy. That's the first line of therapy. Uh, other therapies can include microwave therapy, which, we, uh, which is the TUMT. Uh, there's surgical interventions, especially transurethral section of the prostate, commonly known as a rotor rooter. Uh, there is surgery to take out the prostate, also known as a prostatectomy. It's a little bit bigger surgery. And then there are newer therapies that are also being used, uh, such as radiofrequency ablation, uh, needle ablation, and uh, laser therapies. Some symptoms of BPH can include difficulty urinating, getting up in the middle of the night to urinate, slow, volume, slow flows with low volumes, uh, urgency and occasionally frequency, uh, with long-standing obstruction secondary to the enlarged prostate, other symptoms can start to happen, such as pain in the suprapubic area, which is where the bladder resides, uh, as well as urinary tract infections can ensue. When we talk about prevention for BPH, I, it's described as an enlargement of the prostate occurs as men grow older. So it's, there is nothing to prevent it. There are th things that we do to minimize its effects, really maintaining a healthy lifestyle is what's currently recommended by the American Urologic Association. Testosterone can make BPH symptoms worse, and the reason for that is because testosterone drives the growth of the prostate. By driving the, driving the growth of the prostate, it will actually cause a further blockage of the urinary tube. And so yes, testosterone can worsen BPH symptoms. Surgical interventions require most commonly a hospital stay and either a general anesthetic or a spinal anesthetic. So it tends to be a little bit more invasive versus a microwave therapy, which is done in the office. It takes about an hour to do. Uh, it is something that the patients go home right afterwards and don't require a general anesthetic for. With BPH, it's described as a blockage of the urinary tube. And so with that, we have a couple different risks associated with long-term blockage. 
One is recurrent urinary tract infections with urine sitting in the bladder that increases the risk of infections. Number two, bladder failure because it, the bladder is unable to empty out the bladder. Uh, and then number three would be uh, renal failure whereby the kidneys fail because their urine is not able to be pushed down into the bladder. BPH is a very common condition that affects majority of men as they age. Uh, it's just a matter of how soon they begin to develop symptoms. Risks of not seeking treatment are threefold. Number one, uh, we, there's an increased risk of urinary tract infections uh, because the urine is sitting in the bladder for such a long period of time. Number two would be bladder failure uh, because of the fact that the bladder is unable to empty the urine. And number three would be kidney failure because the urine isn't able to come down from the kidneys. So those are the three common uh, side effects that we most worry about. Uh, an elevated PSA is a level that's higher than what's considered normal. Now that that'll be determined by your doctor, so it's a good idea to talk to your doctor about what the normal limit, limit is. Uh, but an elevated PSA is above what's considered normal, and when that occurs, we do get concerned about the potential risk for prostate cancer. There are multiple causes for an elevated PSA. Uh, one of them is a benign, benign prostatic hypertrophy, also known as BPH, so that's something that's benign. It can also be due to infections. It can be due to inflammation, and yes, it can also be due to prostate cancer. And so it's up to your doctor to determine which one of those uh, elevated, the elevation has come from. So it's a good idea to get the PSA checked out, as well as having a digital rectal exam by your physician. Elevation of a PSA currently cannot be prevented. It's a matter of if it does get elevated, there could be different reasons why it can be elevated, and that needs to be determined by your doctor, because there's ways to bring that PSA down uh, if they're artificially elevated. In conjunction with the PSA test, the second part of the screening for prostate cancer is a rectal exam. That's done by the physician. Most commonly, he uses one finger to uh, feel the size of the prostate, and by doing so, we determine if there's any um, abnormalities within the prostate, and if there are, those need to be further evaluated. Prostates are only in men, and so therefore women do not have prostates. Uh, their men do, and obviously they do need to get them checked for prostate cancer. Enlargement of the prostate can affect your sex life. The reason for that is because enlargement of the prostate can end up pushing on the nerves, which are on either side of the prostate, and therefore, yes, it can affect uh, sexual function, especially erectile dysfunction. Is BPH hereditary? It can be. Uh, we tend to see that um, families who have enlargement of the prostate tends to run uh, through generations. So commonly, if your father had prostate problems, there's a good chance you'll have prostate problems, just a matter of when.